So I turn now to uh, Mr. Narayanan. Uh, you have the floor, Ambassador. Narayanan. Excuse me for the pronunciation. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Thank you <clears throat> for the opportunity to be here. I feel particularly privileged to be present on this occasion because I think of all the, of all the uh, continents, perhaps Asia is the one racked with the largest number of rivalries. Uh, before I take up the subject proper, may I echo what Ambassador Lee said about Monzia the theory and its remarkable efforts in putting together the 14th edition of global governance. It is, I would say, a most magnificent effort, but I'm sure that Monzia Thierry and his team, SNK and Com have done a great job. Thank you very much, Ambassador Thierry, for what you've done. Uh, as is aware, as aware from the, <clears throat> what the previous speaker said, there are many more rivalries in Asia other than the one between the US and China. Some are of much longer standing in many ways, but each of them are important for the future of Asia and perhaps to, for some, to some extent for the future of the world itself. We have seen some of them turn into bitter wars, Vietnam earlier, Afghanistan more recently. <clears throat> but under the surface, I would like to say that each of the rivalries have the potential to turn into major conflicts. And I think this subject is particularly important for every nation of the world, apart from those in Asia, to ponder over and try to arrive at certain basic tenets as to how to overcome the situation. Uh, before take, uh, moving over to Sino-US uh, Sino rivalry, let me take <coughs> the, uh, view the issue from, the, from an Indian perspective. From, for India, there are two major conflicts that it of two major rivalries that affect its future. The Sino-Indian uh, rivalry and, of course, the India-Pakistan tensions and conflicts. We had thought that after uh, many years of intense <laughs> bickerings and conflicts, we had reached a plateau as far as Sino-Indian tensions were concerned. But in the course of the last 18 months, we have seen a flare-up of the Sino-Indian tension with the Chinese unprovoked aggression in the Galwan Heights in Ladakh. And it's obvious, therefore, that China will never allow any of its, na of its neighbors to live in peace. I will revert to that a few minutes later. But there's another 400-pound gorilla in the room, the India-Pakistan conflict. And that, again, has an, is an unending saga of conflict and tensions, resolutions, etc. So, the basic issue that India uh, Asia conference is a series of conflicts. We've heard Ambassador Lee and others talk about <clears throat> other issues. But I, if I might say so, I would say that from the point of view of world peace, the China-Taiwan conflict, and I would say the Sino-Indian conflicts are perhaps the ones with the maximum potential for a worldwide configuration. And I think it's important that this conference uh, deals with some aspects of this. The point I would stress is that there are, there are few pointers to what exactly China wants other than dominance over Asia as the first step in dominate the rest of the world. And I think we should flag this point. <clears throat> Otherwise, as I said, there was no reason in the spring of 2020 for China to have done what it did in the Galwan Heights. Therefore, I think checkmating China's ambitions or expansionist ambitions is crucial for the future of Asia, if not the world. I would uh, sense that we, we, we need to be clear what exactly Sino-US rivalry is about. Is it to checkmate the, uh, of China alone, or is it that the U.S. does not wish to have another nation confronting its, what I would say, the, the, being the number one power in the world? All that I would like to say is that 
The fact that China is a common factor in most conflicts in Asia, and perhaps in other areas as well, reminds me, at least, and I hope the audience will go along with this, of Francis Fukuyama's warning that the new global strategic threat comes not from Islamic terror, but from China. I think we should heed this. The world must accept this innate wisdom, because I think it, it contains a lot of uh, important ideas for the world. Talk of Sino-American rivalry should factor this aspect into calculation and not see it as a mere rivalry between China and the United States. It encompasses the rest of the world as well. On this point, let me strike a jarring note. It's all very well to talk of US-China rivalries. But if the United States is keen to checkmate China's expansionist ambitions, is it willing to go the whole, whole way? There have been periods in the past when the United States has talked of checkmating China. We have seen the pivot to Asia at the, or towards the end of the, of the century. But as each China, US ad, uh, administration changes, there's a change in attitudes, there's a change in perspectives, there's a change in objectives. And therefore, we have seen the United States receding, many Asian countries which have lined up with the United States being caught off the wrong foot, while China keeps going ahead, expanding its ambit of uh, authority and power and moving further and further afield. So when we talk of Sino-US rivalry, and if I would like this audience to really say, how far will the United States be willing to go? Are they again, we are we going to see the Biden administration do what Barack Obama said, what my good friend Hillary Clinton said about the pivot to Asia, etc. We need an objective. I, I'm very clear in my life. I live in Asia. I've dealt with China after, for the better part of nearly 50 years in my official and semi-official capacities. I understand China. I've studied Chinese communism. But there's one thing, whether it's Chinese communists or Chinese nationalists, China wishes to dominate the world. We may accept that position, we may accept Nostradamus, who thinks that a yellow race will dominate the world, or we need to start thinking about it. And I think Monsieur Thierry and, and uh, others who have thought of the subject need to look at this point. So, I would say that Asia by itself cannot withstand China. India is about the only country in, in this region which has the, the capacity to stand up to China. But what China has done by virtue of the, its so-called strategic imperatives, Belt Road Initiative, etc., is to confuse the rest of Asia and tell them that we are offering you so much in terms of economic and other things. And in, in the process, as we heard yesterday, they have taken over large parts of territory across the world. They have more or less kept many countries of Asia completely sort of in their thrall, economically and otherwise. And as we saw in, in Afghanistan, for instance, many Asian countries require Western involvement to even protect the democratic traditions that they've been used to. So I, I think I'm running short, but I just want to ask this question because I think it's a little jarring. Is the United States willing to bite the bullet? Will they walk the talk? We don't want another repeat of what happened in 1999, 2000, 2001. The concerns that many people have about China are real, but given the historical events of recent decades, Vietnam is maybe in the past, but Afghanistan is right there just a few uh, weeks back. So. Can we expect the United States to do something or not? Or are we going to just talk about it, we'll talk in these fora, and what not? People are now talking of the Quad. India is a part of the Quad. But Quad is a plurilateral grouping. It's not really a security. And I've been part of many of these discussions. I don't really think that the Quad is capable of putting its shoulder to the wheels to protect. Then now you've got AUKUS. Is AUKUS going to be we have seen, seen many other groupings of this kind, but 
it ultimately it's a matter of resolve. It's a matter of resolution. And I'm some, I, I am convinced that somehow the American people are not ready to, to sort of pay the penalties or the what is the government for what they have to do if they wish to take on. And my good friends, the British, did that did much more. So just one minute more. And I therefore say that what we require is a display of determination by the United States, because if the United States is not present sign, uh, in, in the conflict, Sino-US rivalry will then finally dissipate after everything, and the Chinese will have everything that goes there they want to have. How do we implement these plans? We've already seen the bruja that has taken place about uh, AUKUS, what has AUKUS has done, and France has stepped back, etc. We want a clear, determined effort on the part of the free world to really come forward and say, can we prevent Chinese expansionism, which is the biggest shadow over Asia? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for your presentation and for having reminded us that there is not only the rivalry between the US and China in Asia, plus what you have said about the US and um, to expect maybe a more cautious US uh, be, be behavior in the future. Thank you.